to Metro Center. Transfers to the perimeter, spaceport, and Disembark before boarding. Person security reserves the right to search travelers at any time. Of course, say a nine. Wait for it to uh, <coughs> render in. Suddenly you're just going to pop in at any second. Yeah, I'm in the right hangout. Just needs to load in. There it goes.
Let's go. Beautiful. One thing I might actually do is uh, set up my voice attack. It's a reclaimer. Big ass ship. I bet he doesn't get given. Um... Oh, Ace of Tuffy, yeah. Uh, the Discord is down for some reason, so uh, that's not working. There was uh, issues with Discord last night, and they seemed to get it fixed, um, but it seems to have gone down again. Um, not having much luck getting in. I'll try again in a second, hold on, let's see if I can get back in. Yeah, it's not working. While you're sorting yourself out, I'm just going to do a quick cargo run, uh, the one I was doing yesterday. Um, I'm going to come back to Hurston with the goods. So I'm going to go to Ariel, pick up what I need to pick up, come back to Hurston, deliver it, then land. Yeah. Well, to be fair, when, when I am when when I'm in Discord with other people, I never stream anyway. Um, I only stream when I'm when I'm playing solo. So once you get in, um, it will set up a text channel thing uh, to use. Yeah, well, like I said, once, once I've uh, done this quick, quick delivery, um, I'll 
come back to Hurston. We'll get a prospector going, and uh, we'll go out and search for some Hadonite and make some make some um, easy money. Oh. To yellow as you wish oh. spill quantum spill quantum drive affirmative Captain. Engage jump drive. Pull your finger out, you lazy bastard. Well, if I'm lucky, I, I should be able to pick everything up um, from the one, uh, the one outpost. If there's been a few caterpillars here, then I'm probably not going to be able to pick up much. What the hell? Oh, I've got someone shooting at me. Let's just take care of you. So let's clear the route. Hold on, where the hell finds it up? Bow light, a term to describe an exceptionally bright meteorite. When bolides are in the atmosphere, they typically will produce a sonic boom. I've noticed this uh, thing now that when you come out of a uh, quantum near a planet, it kind of like throws you back a little bit. Sometimes. Looks like you're actually um, right in the place where I'm going to be landing in a minute anyway. It kind of like throws you off um, a little bit though, because you, you kind of like stop right by the planet and then it throws you back a few thousand um, miles. Right, I'm just uh, coming into, uh, where is it, Latham? Yep, 
Yeah, Lathan, yeah, there we go. Let's just see if uh, this place has got what I need, um, and then we'll uh, jump back to um, Hurston and get the Prospector going. I mean, I can just park the ship in um, in Lawville. Um, I can claim the uh, the gear later. Because if it stays in Hurston, then um, I can I can sell the uh, all, all the goods um, another time. So we could just just park it up. The ship will get claimed. The goods will stay safe on the um, on board, um, and we'll just take the prospector straight out. Deploy landing gear. Deja vu from yesterday now. Sir Sinus is a small faint constellation in the southern sky, first defined in 1756 by French astronomer Nicolas Louis de la Gale. Its name is Latin for compass, referring to the drafting tool used for drawing circles. It should not be confused with Pyxis, a constellation that represents a marinous compass which points north. Its brightest star is Alpha Circini with an apparent magnitude of 3.19. Right, here we come. Where is... I think it's this one over here, isn't it? I've left the door open. I'm just going to go and uh, get some stock. I mean, even if I don't fill up the ship completely, we'll just um, we'll still go back to Hurston. I'm not going to go to the other um, station. That's alright, I filled, filled the ship up. Nice one. So I've got a com Yep, I've got a full ship. Lights, on. Lights off. Lights off. Jesus Christ, is that is that what I think it is? Are you flying a reclaimer? Wow. That is a beast. Oh, I want one. I want one. Although that landing's a little bit off. Jesus, that is a... Yeah, I do love that ship. I've been in a reclaimer before. It's yeah, The interior is just like the Nostromo from Alien. It's beautiful. I mean, there was a landing pad free here, but I think that that ship might have been just a bit too big. Yeah, I mean, look at it. I can see you coming down. 
That is awesome. A corona. The outer part of the sun's atmosphere. The corona is visible from Earth during a total solar eclipse. The effect a solar eclipse has is a glowing ring around a dark sphere. Fascinating. That is one big ship. Okay, well my cargo hold is full. I bet that, that ship looks amazing when it blows up. Right, back door is open, jump on. Massive ship. <laughs> it's not even the biggest either. Power up the ship. Ship online. Close all doors. Comply. Engines on. It's all right. I have it. Departure handover. Standby distancing to thirty meters. Ret retract landing gear. Retracting the landing. I think as soon as I get above 2,500 feet, I might be able to um, plot the course to Hurston without having to leave the atmosphere. Neutron stars, a compressed core of an exploded star made up almost entirely of neutrons. Neutron stars have a strong gravitational field, and some emit pulses of energy along their axis. These are known as pulsars. Yep, I can do it. I only seem to really be able to do it with this ship. Um, I haven't been able to do it with other ships. Right, so luckily enough, I've got an entire cargo's worth of... Um, well, an entire hold's worth of cargo on the ship. So I'm just going to land it at Hurston, um, and then we'll get the prospector out. Um, did you get your backpack and your multi-tool? I think it's like I said. I mean, it, it, when it's in the um, cargo bay, it's going to be it's going to be um, safe. Um, if it gets taken in by the um, by the air traffic control, um, I'm still able to sell it later on anyway. It doesn't make any difference. I've just got to make sure that the ship lands inside the hangar so it's recognised as landing on the system. Um, so it's, it's no problem. We'll just go out um, and just get the um, get the prospector. Deploy landing gear. Gear down and slow it. Uh, what we'll do is, like I said, we'll get the prospector um, and um, we will go to uh, we'll go to Lyria. Um, it's just a shame that the Prospector is a one-seated vehicle because it'd be nice to have like a co-pilot seat for you to sit in. Um, although I, I do have the bunk in the back of the um, ship that you can... You don't have to lie down in it, but you do get the option to sit in it. 
Um, so, have you got a prospector? enough yet um, have you got a prospector or okay right fair enough um, well we can do that if you want it's all it's all really down to luck whether you find the um, the proper um, nodes to do the actual mining in the prospector um, what we are what we're looking for is bexalite and taranite those are the two main um, things that we're looking for call them in yet? Yeah, I can call them in. Right, let's get landing clearance. Um, other than that, if we don't find any decent nodes to mine in the actual prospector itself, uh, we will be trying to find um, some huge Haddonite debris fields. Um, because, like I said, we'll be able to fill up a backpack really, really quickly if we find a, um, an entire debris field full of them. Right, here we go. As you can see from the stream, I've got to wait a few seconds for the hangar to load in. I have to go through this every time I come to Hurston. I don't get this problem at Area 18, but it's always Hurston. Um, so when I get my SSD sorted out and that, this won't be a problem. So all I have to do is just stick my nose in slightly and wait for it to render in. I mean, from your screen, you can probably see the interior perfectly fine. Should pop in any second. Doesn't take long usually. I mean, the most I've earned from using the prospector um, is probably around about sixty thousand. Um, on average, you get between thirty and fifty, depending on um, you know, which nodes you mine. Uh, you do have to generally be fussy about which ones you collect because if um, if you collect anything that's got you know twenty five percent or less um, mineral. Um, you end up filling up your cargo hold with a lot of inert materials, and that takes up a lot of space. Um, but if you do, if you do find a few nodes that have got a lot of materials in it, then yeah, you can you can make quite a bit of money. But the main two materials we we are looking for is bexalite and taronite. Anything else, not 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 so bothered. Come on, is this going to pop in or what? Um, but I generally find, especially with this specific build, um, oh here we go, it's starting to load in. Uh, with this build, 3.7.2, um, Hasnite is the main money owner. Uh, simply because, as you know, they only just released the caves and they're trying to force people to do FPS mining, so therefore that makes the money. Um, with 3.8, as you know, they're bringing in the mole, um, so therefore um, Hadonite mining probably won't be worth as much anymore, but then. Um, actual prospector and mole Landing mining complete. Uh, will be worth a considerable amount because they want to get people to do mining again. Right, let's open the doors. <coughs> right, we'll, just, we'll just leave this here. Right, let's close this up. Where's the arrivals? I think it's on the other side, isn't it? Right, so I don't know how the mole is going to handle. I don't know. Um, I know that it's going to be a little bit more powerful than the prospector. The, la the laser is going to be a lot more powerful. Um, but from what I can tell, the, the, the principle is probably going to be exactly the same. Um, so um, I don't know if he was watching my stream yesterday uh, when I was doing the mining. Um, but it's all—it's pretty much the same as when you do the um, the hand mining. You have to kind of make sure that when you charge the laser up and the and the power gets within the green levels, you've got to keep it within the green levels. If you overcharge it, you've got to you know literally turn it off or point away from the rock because um, if the overcharge gets to 100%, the rock will explode and nine times out of ten it will completely destroy you. Uh, right over here. Uh, 
Alright, okay, let's, let's, get, let's get our prospector going. Hangar 8. Right, what we're going to do um, is we're going to go to we're going to go to Lyria, um, set a waypoint for Loveridge um, Mineral Reserve, um, because you usually find that a lot of the nodes spawn quite regularly around the um, the specific mining depots, as opposed to just finding somewhere in the middle of nowhere and trying to do it that way. Um, like I said, those um, those mining depots. Um, like um, was it the Shubin, Sal Two, Sal Five, and Pros um, Loveridge? They've all been placed in those specific regions simply because they're you know mineral rich areas. So therefore, you're going to find them a lot easier in those specific places. Don't forget to um, turn turn off your um, vertical takeoff and landing system once you get in because um, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass when the engines are pointing downwards. Ready, ship for launch. I know. Open contacts. Contacts. Close contacts. Okay, bold. Just trying to stick my head around so I can see the see the hangar opening up. Not very easy in this ship. Oh, we right. are the warrior. Uh, oh, I'll change that. Oh, there we go. I can do it here. Torso. Well, don't forget to put your um your backpack on. Uh, right. We're going to go to um, Loveridge Mineral in um, Lyria. I'm not sure if you're still watching the stream, so I'll type it in there. Please visit us again. Remember if your contact is in the career chain, you should contact the person's resource managers. The information they should are excited to be watching. Okay, let's go. Open star map. Come 
engines are overheating. Um, probably need to upgrade these um, at some point because they are quite sluggish. Right, so let's go to Lyria. I didn't do that and I forgot to do it myself. He's already on his way, bloody hell. I'm trailing behind. Oh, instantly intercepted. I just shot past him then. Oh, please don't crash the desktop, please don't crash the desktop. Oh, my God. I'm not sure if you're still watching the stream, um, just let me know if you are still watching the stream, that way um, I don't always have to keep on typing inside chat all the time, um, and I'll be able to show you on screen what I'm doing, 
I mean, I know there's about a 20 second delay, but it's not too much of a delay that's going to be causing an issue. No, that's cool. That's cool. Um, well, what, once, we, once I get down to the surface, I'll wait for you to um, catch up on that. And um, um, I, I haven't actually seen what happens when two prospectors mine the same um, node at the same time. I'm assuming that it has a higher risk of um, overheating when you've got two mining lasers hitting it at the same time. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. On the flip side. Um, we would, you could also be able to mine the same node um, at a greater distance than being really close to it. We'll just see what happens. But yeah, mainly what we're going to be trying to look for today is the uh, the Hadonite, um nodes. Um, if, if we find um, a debris field full of those, uh, it's going to be awesome because we'll have loads and loads of stuff. Um, we'll be able to fill up a backpack really, really quickly. And as I said, it, you know, the Hadonite is where the money's at in this patch. Um, I'm not sure, like I said earlier, I'm not sure whether they're going to keep that with um, 3.8. Um, I do believe that Hadonite will lose its worth, but mining um, quite a lot of different minerals um, that were worthless before are probably going to be worth quite a lot more money now because, again, introducing the mole into the game, they want people to stress test it as much as possible and as, as, as you know, people are going to do what makes them money. So they'll just completely um, strip out the economy for box missions. They're going to be worthless. Um, doing delivery um, transport missions, um, you know, like big haulage, the bottom's probably going to fall out of that as well. That's not going to be worth anything. And, you know, they're literally going to prioritise on, on the mining for 3.8. So therefore, you're going to see a load more prospectors, a load of mines, um, moles. Because they want to get the best results for feedback and bug tracking. Um, so, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, like I said, Hadonite ends up being worth about ten grand for a entire backpack's worth of um, minerals. Because, well, everyone's been testing it f from three point seven to three point seven point one point two. So they've, they've probably got enough information on bugs issues and general FPS mining and I think with I think it's with 3.9 they're going to be um, introducing more of the bounty um, you know the non-lethal bounties so that will be the thing for 3.9 so mining and um, FPS mining will probably be w worthless in 3.9 but um, doing the hand-to-hand -hand combat which they're going to be implementing um, picking up unconscious players and putting them on your putting them on your ship so that their bodies well the, the player then teleports to a prison planet yeah yeah their, their body gets turned into a cloned npc that you place on your ship um that'll be the next thing and i guarantee you that is going to be endless amounts of bugs with that um where people get locked into um, their character and they don't get teleported over to the prison planet and you know you get people that just like lock them in their stasis cells in the back of their ships and just piss about <laughs> But yeah, that'll be the that'll be the next thing. Bounties, bounty missions. Um, that'll be the high-paying um, jobs in 3.9 when they introduce all that sort of thing. I'm looking forward to that. And they've, they've done it in good time as well because obviously with uh, the Mandalorian on um, on Disney um, now getting everyone really really kind of like hyped up for the whole bounty hunter Star Wars thing. Um, everyone's going to be getting the Cutlass because it looks like his ship. Although the Cutlass doesn't actually have a, um, um, a cell in the back of it. Although I think, was it the, the Cutlass Blue? That one's going to be a bounty ship. So that one should have holding cells in it. So yeah, people are going to be going crazy and trying to do um, a lot of uh, Mandalorian roleplay in their Cutlass Blues with their, their cells in the back of the ship. In all fairness, that is definitely the ship that I'll probably want to get is the Cutlass Blue. 
because that one is a, a specifically designed for bounty hunting. Now, I've got my Avenger. Um, um, oh, I keep forgetting the bloody name of it. Um, I've got my. I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> my Avenger Stalker. Yeah, I've got my Avenger Stalker. That one has six um, cells in the back of it, um, stasis cells. Um, so that is designed as a smaller um, bounty ship. But the Cutlass Blue um, is going to be a little bit more powerful, as you know, because the Cutlass is a lot more powerful than the um, than the Avenger. So interesting to see what's going to happen with that. I've just noticed I've been talking to nobody because you've just gone out for a cigarette looking at the chat. being interdicted. Uh, my screen has froze, that is not good. Oh, I'm back. Awesome. Ah. You're back. Perfect time, I've literally just been interdicted. Um, I just also realised that I was talking for five minutes before I realised that you weren't there. <laughs> All right, everything checks out. You're free to go. Okay, yeah, what I was saying, um, probably going to repeat myself here now, um, but what I was saying um, is that in this build and the 3.7 build in general, um, they prioritised on the whole FPS mining, so um, obviously mining Hadonite was really, really um, worth your while because you made a lot of money from it. In 3.8, um, Hadonite mining, the bottom is going to fall out of it, so therefore you probably won't earn half as much as what you earn now, but they're going to prioritise um, ship mining again. So all the um all the minerals that were probably worthless before are probably going to be worth a fortune now because as they're bringing in the mole into 3.8 um they're going to want everybody to start like testing it um so they can get feedback bug reports all that sort of thing so you probably will be getting a few people doing fps mining but it's not going to be worth anything um box missions probably aren't going to be worth anything um doing transport uh, big haulage cargo that's probably not going to be worth anything so you're just going to see prospectors and moles everywhere in 3.8 because that's what's going to be making the money um, and then I went on to say that in 3.9 they'll probably be adding in the prison planets and the, uh, the bounty hunting um, so therefore ships like the Cutlass Blue the, uh, the Avenger Stalker um, I think it is it the arrow, the one the one that's got the um, EMP and the single cell in the back. Um, they're all going to end up making lots of money because uh, in three point nine they're bringing in the uh, the hand to hand combat and non lethal takedowns. So if, if players end up getting bounties on their head, yeah, the Hulk that's the one. Um, so if players get bounties on their heads, um, you're going to be able to knock them out. Why can't I find the, the waypoint? Um, let's clear the route. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to knock out players, put them on the back of your ship, and as soon as um, they enter your ship, um, the player will be teleported to the prison planet, and an NPC clone will replace their body on your ship. So you've still got like a body on your ship, so you still have that immersive um, awesomeness. Um, but then 
players aren't also going to be trapped on your ship uh, because you know that people are going to grief the hell out of that. You know, they'll just end up trapping people in the stasis cells in the back of the ship and just, just go around doing other things and not, not claim them. So, like I said, bounty hunting in 3.9 is going to be the money maker. Um, if they do um, stick to their guns with adding in the hand to hand combat and releasing the Cutlass Blue. Right, what we want to do now, um, I'm going to keep your speed to where the red line is at the bottom. Um, it's down to you. I mean, I, I always do it. I always put my, uh, my my landing gear down. You don't have to, but that's what I do. Um, we're going to probably need the lights on because it's dark. And as soon as you get close to the ground, just do your scanning. I usually stay close to the ground because you get you get better scan results when you do that. Right, I've got some. Sure. Voice control off. Leo, offline. Right, we've got a couple of them over here. Okay, well, it looks like we've got some. Yes, we've got some um, Hadonite crystals over here. Let's have a look what we got. Becoming elite is an arduous yes, right. And over here, come, come land over here. We've got some Hadonite. Right, okay, it's these um, these three bits over here. So, the way I do it, the way I do it is um, I crouch down. Um, because I always find if you, if you stay crouched, you won't get injured when it pops. Because sometimes when it, when the um, when the rocks actually um, fracture, you can actually take damage from them. But if you stay crouched and you step back just as it's about to pop, you won't take any damage at all. Right, so once you've locked on, I don't know if you've ever done this before, um, just use your mouse wheel to regulate the power. Yeah, try not to go too overboard to start with, see how long it takes for the um, for the thing to go up. And Like I say, once you get into the green zone, just keep it in the green zone, use your mouse wheel to raise it or lower it if need be. And just before the, the line fills up completely from right to left, um, turn off your laser and step back so that it doesn't um, injure you when, uh, when, the, when the rock pops. Sometimes you do need to get a little bit closer to it just to get it to move up quicker. There we go. There you go, that's how, that's how you do it. Right, 
the trick is trying to keep it centered in one place because um, you cut through it a lot quicker when you when you just burn in one um, central spot there you go yeah I say when it pops try and quick jump back as quickly as possible just to prevent yourself getting smacked by any of those um, flying rocks Uh, you will also probably notice you get you'll get this uh, bug where when you press F to pick up the rock, it'll kind of um, do a double hand kind of grab thing. I'm sure the devs are aware of it, but it is a pain in the ass because um, when it does that second hand grab, it doesn't actually pick anything up. Right, you take you take the last one. Yeah, try and crouch down. You get you get it a lot easier when you crouch down. That's it. There you go. Just remember, as soon as the the um, the bar starts to fill up, just before it finishes filling up completely, turn off your laser and step back. There you go. Now if you want to keep track of um, how much uh, you've got in your inventory, um, just press the I key and it tells you how much space you've uh, used. Okay. It does actually take a while to fill it up to 100%. But the cool thing is, um, you've got Loveridge Mineral Reserve over there. When our backpacks get completely filled, we can literally just fly over to Loveridge um, and we can sell it straight away. We don't have to go to Hurston, we don't have to go to um, um, Art Corp. We can literally just sell it straight here on the planet, straight out of our backpacks. And if, you've, if, you've, if you create some mission crates um, and you store them on your prospector and put the crates by your bed, um, you can even sell them um, using this, the ship infantry as well. Right, we all good to go? I think we've got them all, haven't we? I think when we're actually mining on the um, surface like this, um, it's probably best if we turn our lights off because I think that the, um, the glare of the light can sometimes make it difficult to see the rocks. Right, I do think I saw another. There, were, there is something else over here as well, I believe. Let me just do a quick scan. It could be. Where was it? It was around this. Oh, it's over here. It's over here. The, the, yes, it's another Hadonite deposit. I think we've got another three more rocks. Yes, we have.
There we go. Oh shit! Fuck it. Well, watch out for the mountain, dude. So I've landed fine. Right. One of the things you want to try and avoid when you're doing Hadonite mining are the ones that you get on the side of mountains. If you see them on the side of a mountain, um, they're going to be nothing but problems because as soon as you fracture the rock, all the Hadonite crystals will, will literally roll down the side of the mountain and you'll lose them all. They'll all just completely... You, you end up having to run to the bottom of the mountain to find them and they just scatter really really quickly and you just lose them all so like I said if you see loads of rocks on the side of the mountain just, just I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even risk it it's no, there's no point because you'll end up wasting your time and you'll only pick up about one or two crystals well this is Aphrodite this isn't Hadonite this is actually Aphrodite no, we'll, still, we'll still grab some anyway because um these are worth a little bit less than Hadonite, but yeah, they're still worth more than Dolomite. Yeah, usually I will always only specifically target Hadonite because they pay out the most. But Dolomite, that's why um, Aphrodite isn't too bad. Yeah, not to mention, when, when you haven't got the, um, the massive spotlights on here, you can actually see the um, individual crystals easier as well because you get that yellow outline, especially in the dark. is glowing. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, anybody that doesn't have a prospector has to go to the caves um, to do this properly, and you get um, you get a whole mixture of hadonite, dolomite, and aphrodite, and a whole load of people that are probably going to end up shooting at you as well. Whereas this is a little bit safer because we're out in the middle of nowhere, but you will still get people that turn up. All right, let me let me um, should we take care of this one here? Looks like there's a glitch on the floor there because um, it's all sparking. There you go. Oh, can you? That was awesome. I didn't realise that. There 
Yeah, come grab, grab some as well, dude. Uh, have you done much uh, prospect mining um, as well? I mean, are you are you new to that? Oh, that's everything. Right, let's go. Let's go try and find some more. <laughs> With any luck, we'll find a. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, some rocks are harder to crack than others. Um, the ones that have the, um, you know, the more valuable minerals in it are harder to crack, and it's very difficult to try and keep it in the green zone. But with a little bit of practice, you get used to how to do it. Go looking. Uh, the only problem with the scanner is it still shows you the marker for the um, um, for the crystals, even though we've already mined them. There's nothing there, but it's still detecting the nodes. Oh, I've got another one. Oh, we've got. Oh, dude, we've got loads here. Absolutely loads. We found a debris field. And it's had a night as well. We've got one, two, three, four. F yeah, we've got six, six nodes. That's three each. We're going to fill up our backpacks in no time. It's not this often that I find these this amount of um, Hadonite nodes all in the same area. Usually you have to kind of um, scan around the surface for a bit before they start showing up, but there's a whole bunch of them all together. This is why coming to one of the uh, the mining outposts like Loveridge or um, um, was it the Shubin Sal 5 or Sal 2 places are the best places because they're extremely minerally rich in the terrain that they're based on. So you find more of these nodes in the area. Some people just try to go out into the middle of nowhere on the um, on the moon, thinking that um, they're going to find things um, really far out in the middle of nowhere. But it's not. That's not true. You know, the closer to these um, mineral outposts you are, the more chance you are you have of finding them. Oh, oh overheating. Right, it's going to pop. Let's have a look. Let's see what you're doing. Oh, I see, yeah, uh, yeah.
Nice. Yeah, when you get the um, when you get the harder rocks with the um, the smaller green zones, you do have to take a little bit of extra time um, and do it slowly um, because when you have to use your mouse wheel to adjust the um, the, the amount of um, throttle you put into the laser, um, you don't want it to jump up too high too quickly because, like I said, you'll end up overcharging the rock. This is, uh, I might have to change, just change it to me. Oh, there we go, that's better. Sometimes it doesn't show up properly. That's it. When we find ourselves a um, a larger rock um, that the prospector will cut into, um, obviously I'll let you cut into it because if you haven't really done too much mining, um, you literally just use the exact same um, process that you do here, but it's a little bit more um, a little bit more difficult and there's more rocks because once you fracture it, you've then got to um, check all the other smaller rocks that come out of it. was a much harder rock to crack. Let's get a little bit closer. I'm struggling to get this one in the green zone. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, we've been quite fortunate so far because all of these um, hadonite nodes have all been on relatively like flat ground. Um, as I said earlier, if, if you did it on the side of a mountain, all of these um, crystals would just roll down the side of it and we, you'd end up losing most of them. Because uh, even though Star Citizen is still buggy and it's still kind of um, got its issues, um, gravity and collision physics seems to work pretty fine with things like this. We're getting through these really quickly. And uh, unlike um, trading missions and box missions, um, if we if we get like um, if we get like a server crash or a server disconnect, and we end up getting them um, respawning back at Hurston, um, anything that we've collected will still be saved. So we will have a backpack full of um, mineral, um, or that we can then just sell straight away. We don't lose that. Uh, you will lose it if you get killed. If you get killed wearing the backpack, um, everything inside it will despawn. So that's one advantage about doing um, Hadonite mining. Yeah, it's, that's very handy. Um, so if you haven't got any, um, if you haven't converted any of your backpack into uh, mission boxes, and you end up losing your ship with all your mission boxes on, which is um, 
quite annoying when that does happen. Um, anything that is in your backpack when you lost connection will still be there. Until the devs patch that out. So a lot of people do turn their nose up at mining because um, they don't like the, um, you know, the kind of um, how how long how long it takes and the effort you have to put into it. But on the flip side, um, it can be quite rewarding um, in the in the sense that if you're doing this sort of mining using the prospector or the terrapin, uh, I think there's another ship as well that has the specific scanners that detect these things. Um, but yeah, if you get a, um, a server disconnect. Then you haven't lost anything because um, it's still in your backpack. Oh god, have we have we emptied this plate this area already? Jesus, we have. Cool. Toilet door open. Let's go see if we can find go find some big rocks for you to try and mine. Right, I think we might be in luck. I think these are the ones we've already mined earlier. Yeah, well, I think we've already done these ones. That's the annoying thing. Is that unlike the um, unlike the big rocks, once you've um, taken all the Hadonite crystals, um, the markers still show up when you do a scan. Some more. Where are these ones we've? No, no, we've got three, three rocks down here. What are they? Let's scan them. Uh, why's my scanner not working? I can't scan these. Could be had tonight. Yeah, my, my scanner's bugged. I can't. I can't detect what they are. The only way to find out. Oh, it is had tonight, is it? Okay. Well, we can go for it then. Every now and again, for some reason, um, you do get issues with the scanners where sometimes they, um, you know, the, the scanner won't scan properly. Uh, there's a number of ways to try and get around that. Sometimes I'll just land my ship, get out, um, draw my weapon, bring up my Moby glass, get back into the cockpit, and sometimes that does reset the issue. Yes. So at least my hand scanner's working.
I have to say, this is the first time I've been in a specific area like this where there's Hadonite fields everywhere. I usually have to spend a lot of time just scanning the surface until I come across them. So we've been quite fortunate today. Indeed. It probably means that once we've um, mined all these areas around here, we'll not find any more. I don't know if you're seeing it, but yeah, get see the uh, that's the sparking glitch on the uh, on the ground. Come on, pick up. That's it. Uh, so I've got fifty eight percent in my um, in my backpack already. So we're over halfway. I'm going to have to put full power into this one. So it really doesn't want to break at all, does it? Okay, right, we're in the green zone. This one's a this one's a problem, this one. Yeah, I had to step back for that one because I had to be really, really close to break that one open. There you go, you take the rest. I'll just wait here until you get back in your ship.
I'm just gonna try and scout around to see if I can find any um any bigger rocks to cut into. Oh we got one, we got one. What is this? Right. We, this isn't anything that we really want at all. Um, this is beryl and diamond. They're not worth anything at the moment. I have a feeling that they might be worth something in 3.8 when um, they prioritise mining again. I think we might need to move out the area a little bit because I think we're, we're picking up some of the sites that we've already mined and we're going to get turned around quite easily. Well, I found, found something over here. I think it could be more Haddonite, you know. Yeah, I found another... Oh, Jesus Christ, there's loads of them. Oh no, not loads of them, there's only three, sorry. Oh, it's Aphrodite. Uh, we can leave these ones. This is where we have to start um, searching for it now because um, they're starting to get very far and few between. And then I find two at the same time. Oh, we've got loads of rocks over here. Loads of rocks. These are the big ones. Jesus, there's loads, bloody hell, there's loads in this room. I've never seen a rock with that many different minerals in it before. Laronite. See, the thing is, Laronite sells very well if you're doing it as a cargo delivery mission. Um, but unfortunately for mining, it's not worth as much. It's a shame because there's lots of uh, Laronite here. Uh, I'm not sure if you're interested in just cutting into one of these just for the sake of cutting into it and practicing. I mean, you won't much, you won't probably won't make, make make much money from them, but. If you want to just get the practice in, um, there's a few rocks here that you can try. I mean, the one that I'm the one that I'm looking at now. Um, I'm just going to shoot this one here. This one might be worth uh, trying.
Right, so it's the same, exactly the same um, concept as using the handheld one. It's used, you know, the front. I, I can see you burning into that. I'm, I'm not cutting into it, but I can see, I can see the rock energy level going up. So if I was to join in, that's probably going to do it in tw half the time. I'll let you do it. <laughs> yeah, the only problem with the bigger rocks is when they've overcharged they take a lot longer to cool down than the smaller ones. So that's probably going to pop out a little bit, so I'd get back for when it does pop. It is a little bit tricky trying to get it in the green zone and keep it in the green zone, but once you get once you get used to it and you figure out how to use how to use the mouse wheel to um, regulate the power. Um, it does get a little bit easier after a while, um, and as soon as it fractures, the uh, the smaller parts um, don't take as much energy as the um, as the bigger one. So you, you'd have to use a lot less power, otherwise you'll overcharge it very quickly. You're right. Because it was overcharged, um, the rock exploded. Jesus Christ! You got you got proper launched. For me personally, whenever I'm um, mining these rocks, um, I, I, I am quite fussy simply because of obviously how much money you get at the end of it. Um, I will not touch anything that's less than 20%. Because um, anything that's less than 20% 20, 20 means that you're going to get more inert materials than actual minerals. I'll try, and, I'll try and fracture this one here. Oh. Yeah, you really need a 
very small amounts of um, power when cutting the, the chunks because like I said they don't take as much to, um, to, to fracture their uh, second time. And it's very easy to overcharge them. Right, these, these should all be um, outlined in blue now, or purple. So, I mean, I've got Laranite here that's got 26%. I would take that. Um, if that was Taranite or Bexalite, I would have taken that. There's a lot of empty ones here. But yeah, that's, that's the general idea of it anyway. Um, I don't know how this is going to work with the uh, with the mole when that comes in. Yeah, um, if it shows empty, you don't pick those up because basically you're just filling up your hold with inert materials and, then, and they're not worth anything. There was supposed to be um, a mechanic that was coming into the game um, at some point where you can attach a module to your ship that basically processes the minerals and it spits out inert material so that your whole, you know, your, your, your containers have only the, um, the minerals that you've been mining. So you can literally just spit out all the crap that you don't want and you'll have 100% um, minerals, but they haven't implemented that yet. That would be awesome. I'd probably imagine that's what they're going to add into the mole, being as that's going to be the next ship that they're bringing in. But um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the basics of um, mining in the Prospector. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Anyway, um, shall we shall we move on? Because none of these um, none of these nodes are really worth anything anyway. It's just to get the practice in. I found another Hadonite deposit. That's Aphrodite. Thing is, there's quite a lot of them. It's not had a night, but we've got an entire debris field full of these things down here. So what we could do is we could mine it all. If we fill our backpacks up, we can turn it into a mission crate, or we could just go straight to Loveridge and sell the, sell our infantry. How many have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we've got nine. God, if, if this was all Hadonite, we would have filled up a backpack and we could have um, converted the backpack into a mission crate and um, started to fill up the second backpack. Right, 
I've got to be careful with this rock because the uh, the green zone is quite small. Stay where you are, stay where you are. Oh. See, I usually know when it's about to um, fracture, so I always jump back. I mean, in a, in a realistic situation, when you see that rock fracture the way it does, you don't want to be standing over it when that happens because you're going to get smacked hard. And I was always getting injured because I used to always stand up and just stand there mining until it, it, it fractured. And I, I kept on getting injured all the time, so I kept trying new things, and it always worked out better. But as soon as you, um, as soon as you stay crouched and you jump back and turn off your laser just about a second before it breaks, um, you'll never get injured. Jesus Christ, it's, it's another narrow one. Doing well so far. I'm oh, quite impressed with that one. I thought I was going to end up going into the overcharging area because it was actually quite a narrow um, green zone. Just a normal rock. Yeah, as a as a safety precaution, it's always a good idea to have a few um, medi pens um, handy, just in case you do end up um, getting smacked by the rocks, because um, you will get injured um, if you're unlucky. And I think um, if unless you um, use the uh, the medical pen, you could end up dying. And you'll definitely die if you um, overcharge the rock to the point where it explodes. That will kill you outright, straight away. And hello viewers, we're getting quite a quite an audience going. Welcome to the stream. Oh yeah, 100 medipens. I've, I'm not sure about being safe, but it's, it looks like you might have a bit of an addiction to painkillers. Uh, the worst one is um, when you forget to um, reassign them and um, you end up injuring yourself and you're pressing the button to um, inject yourself and it's like nothing's happening and then you, then you end up panicking going into Moby Glass and assigning them to your, um, to your utility slot. Well, 
that reminds me. I did um, I did a mission yesterday. Um, you know the you know the um the real simple ones, the uh, the, the locate the crew ones uh, where you get like the freelancer Rex. You got to find the five members of the crew. Um, I made about fifteen thousand on that because um, there was about three missions showing up in the um, in the Moby Glass. One of them was find five members of the crew. Another one was find one member of the crew, and the third one was locate the black box. Now all three missions were tied into the same ship, so even though I discovered the navigator, I completed one mission, and also completed a second mission because he was assigned twice. Um, when I found the black box, I put that on my ship, but there was um, there was a whole load of um, crates of Etam sitting in his cargo hold. Um, so I literally just picked him up, put him in my uh, ship, took him to Grim Hex, and I sold him. Um, made quite a bit of money for that. So not only did I make fifteen grand by doing three missions that were all tied tied into the same location, um, but yeah, I also made some money selling narcotics as well. So yeah, when you get bored of doing the old bounty hunting and the trading or whatever, and that you see those um, locate the crew missions, um, keep an eye um, on the actual mission description because if you see that there's three different missions all try all tied into. Um, say for instance a, um, a constellation or a freelancer I guarantee you that they're all the same mission Yeah, uh, the ones that I don't tend to do um, are the ones for the bigger ships. If there's like a, um, a Starfarer missing crew or a Caterpillar uh, missing crew, I tend not to bother with those because the um, the search radius is so huge and it takes a lot longer to find them. Plus you can get lost inside the, uh, the wreck of a Starfarer as well because as you know it's a very big ship. When you've got like floating bodies on the outside of it and on the inside as well, um, it's, it is quite time consuming. So uh, whenever I do those locate the crew missions, I always make sure that I, I choose the ones that are um, freelancer or constellations because they're just the right size um, to not take too long. Right, okay, I'm 95% full. If we cut this bad boy open, I don't know how much you've got left in your bag. But if we cut this one open, this should give us a full backpack. Ninety percent. All right. Well, if we share this one out, hopefully this should fill us up completely. Tuck in. Alright, so I had 95%. I picked up two crystals and it went up to 96. Ninety-seven. So every three crystals you pick up is one percent. I'm just, I'm just reading reading the message there. Yeah. yeah, the game when the game has weird bugs like that, it can be quite frustrating. Ninety-seven. 
98. Well, I should have a. Yep, okay, my pack back is full. Um, so, what I'd normally do now is I'd now kind of go into my infantry and, you know, I, I, I only need a cargo grid. Um, I would change this into a, a mission box and that would completely empty out my backpack and put a crate in my uh, ship and then I could carry on mining again. Um, but obviously, as you know, if the game suddenly crashes, um, you end up losing your ship with the cargo that you've just collected on it. So what we can do now is uh, go over to uh, Loveridge, which shouldn't be too far away because that was the waypoint that we used to get here, and uh, sell what we've got in our backpacks. Now because we've got a mixture of Aphrodite and Hadonite, um, we won't get the full 33,000. If it was pure Hadonite, we'd get 33,000 for a full backpack. is Loveridge. Why am I not seeing any waypoints? Oh, here we go. Ah, it's over here. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of uh, when they fill up their um, their backpacks. If, if, if all they're doing is hadonite mining rather than prospector mining, uh, they fill up their backpacks. They create a few mission crates using what they've got, and then they go up to um, they go up to Area 18 um, in Art Corp, or they go to Hurston, or they go to Port Olisar. Um There's no need to do that. You can literally just sell all the stuff on your backpack in one of these. Um, at mineral outposts and then as soon as you've um, solved it all you can get back to doing the mining again the only thing you've got to be aware of is your hydrogen fuel because if you spend too long down on the surface mining selling mining again you could end up running out of fuel when you spend 90% of the time um, using using the scanner mode you don't get to see how much fuel you've got left Be careful around here because um, Loveridge does not have an armistice protection zone, and you do get a lot of people come over here to um, do cargo runs and box missions. And because there's no armistice zone, as you know, um, you are susceptible to get shot by people. Infantry, Aphrodite. Okay, I've got nine thousand for the Aphrodite, and sixteen thousand for I had a night. So yeah, usually I would only I'd only use um, I'd only fill up with Hadonite because that pays out the most. Um, 
obviously we, we, you, you just want to just come out and do some uh, mining and practice how to do it and that so uh, yeah but yeah in, in this patch it isn't going to last much longer because obviously um, I think um, 3.8 is going to come out in about two weeks or so um, yeah you just want to keep your eyes open for those Hadonite fields because um, that's going to fill up your backpack really quickly and like I say a full backpack of Hadonite is worth 33,000 So a few weeks ago, I had uh, two mission crates of Hadonite that I stored on my prospector and a full um, backpack full of Hadonite. I sold it all at the same time and I made just under nine, just under 100,000 UEC. Uh, oh, mine's up here, isn't it? And uh, yeah, in a nutshell, that's um, that's mining. But as I said, I am interested to find out how mining is going to change in 3.8 because um, they're going to completely change the uh, the economy for the minerals. Plus, I'm also interested to see how the mole handles as well. Yeah. It is, it's, it's definitely something um, alternate to do rather than just doing the usual um, delivery missions or bounty missions. It's just, it's, it's nice because it's kind of, it's still kind of a little bit of exploration because um, you're exploring the service. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I, I was thinking about it, but I, I just kind of want to see um, how it handles first before I decide to get one. Uh, another little trick that I usually do as well, if I've been mining for about half an hour, 45 minutes, um, I'll set my ship down on the surface, turn everything off and log out in my bunk. Um, obviously because again, the, you know, the longer that you're on the surface and just going around doing all your mining, uh, the chances are you might get a server disconnect or a crash. Um, yeah, if you limit it to about 45 minutes at, at a time, log out, go off, do something else, come back and then log back in again. Um, you can carry on mining again, and that's how that's how I ended up getting all my mission crates. I just read your messenger. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll be I'll be certainly interested to um, see what it's all about because you can't do that from the policy, can you? Dude, look, there's literally one right over here, right next to the outpost. What is this? Is this... Oh, it's a single, it's a single rock. Ah. This one is also right on a ridge as well, so as soon as you, you fracture this, it would fall down and you would end up losing bits. It's had a night. Two Hadonite nodes right here. One each. All right, this is probably going to be a good way to show you what it's like trying to mine um, one of these nodes when it's on a um, on a slope. Okay. Right, this one here, the one that I'm looking at right now, um, this one will, when you break it, all the crystals will roll right down 
into um, into the rocks right there. Um, so if you want to try and mine this one here, you'll see what I mean. When it when it when it fractures, you'll see all, all the crystals just roll down this hill, and they can be a pain in the ass to try and locate. Alright, so if, if I if I crack this open, you you watch what happens when I break it. See if you can find all the pieces. I mean, luckily the slope isn't that very big, and it's it's probably going to stop when it gets to that rock at the bottom of the um, the slope. But when you do this on the side of a mountain, I guarantee you, you'll probably lose about ninety percent of the um, the crystals that come out of this. It is risky trying to mine this close to Loveridge because, like I said, it's um, it's a very popular place for ships. See what I mean? They've just bounced all over the place. And there are some that went over here. There are some that landed by the rock over here. Now imagine doing that on the side of a mountain and they all just fucking roll down the side and they, they just completely scatter. I mean I can't even see where half of them went. It is easier to do it without your torch on because they, um, they get highlighted easier. But you're literally just like running around staring at the ground trying to find them. There were a few that, yeah, there's, there's a couple here that bundled up. The rest of them just kind of bounced off and just scattered over into those where all those uh, white rocks are. That should be... Yeah, there's, there's still a couple up here. I mean, there's, there's a good... Um, so one, two, three, four, f there's about five rocks up here, um, but when I cracked it, I noticed, I saw that there was a, there was a few of them that, that proper bounced off the ground and just flung off into that um, um, pile of white rocks over there. Probably never find them again. You end up wasting so much time that you just kind of like give up on it. So it's always just better just to pick up the ones that you can see and move on to the next one. I mean, there, there is another node up there. Um, I think that one's further up on the on the um, on the flat ground, so you probably wouldn't lose anything from the from the, from the next one. But yeah, there's about f five 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 gems there you you can pick up. Um, I'll let you. Okay, I'll let you mine that one. There's been a few times where I've been flying around uh, looking for Hadonite and I found a massive debris field full of these um, nodes, about 10, 12 of them, but they was all on the side of a mountain and I just knew that it wasn't worth my time because um, I would lose most of the rocks um, down the side of the mountain. And it's just so annoying when you see that because um, that one location that I found would have instantly filled up my backpack from empty had it been on um, flat ground.
Yeah, see, I don't think I don't think any of these ones went down the slope there, though, because because this one's more on flat surface. I do hope that in three point eight they do fix that um that double arm grab thing because it is annoying. Come on. Well, that's put me up to ten percent now. All right. Um, well, I'm probably going to um, jump off in five minutes um, because um, I'm actually at work tonight and I've got to get to sleep shortly. Um, so I've got to get my six hours sleep before I start at two in the morning. Um, but yeah, if you, if you crack on and pretty much do what, what I've been doing here, uh, what I've shown you, um, you'll fill up your backpack in no time. Just keep an eye on your fuel. Make sure that your hydrogen fuel um, doesn't run out because you'll end up getting stranded on the surface. What I'm probably going to do is, I think I'm far enough away from the outpost to, yeah, not a problem at all. Yeah, I should be far enough from the outpost to actually go to sleep in my bunk, so I should spawn back in this location when I come back. Yeah, it's, all, it's all been trial and error for me in all fairness I mean um, when I was learning this myself and that I made a load of mistakes and uh, ended up losing losing my life or collecting inert materials there you go log out um, and yes yeah, I did, I did uh, watch a few YouTube videos to get um, ideas on what the best materials was to go for and things like that but yeah FPS mining is definitely the way forward in this build of the game at the moment. So what I'm probably going to do is when 3.8 comes out, I'm probably going to hold off for about a week or two until everybody else has figured out all the changes, um, especially to the um, the mineral economy. Because I, I do have a feeling that things like a Terranite and Bexalite aren't going to be the only ones that are worth money anymore because, again, they want to try and promote the mole and they want people to use the mole and they'll probably just make sure that mining is going to be the, the main way to make lots of money. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But um, other than that, I'm going to cut the stream there and um, I will catch you later on in the week, hopefully. So uh, have fun and good luck with the, uh, with the mining.